I want to make sure I get this statistic. Hurricane right. Central. The, the that's going on five stars at that's, some point. That's interesting, though. For context, yeah. this past season, Miami had eight five stars on their roster, which is more five stars than wins. So if I had a – if Miami had a – if Miami had a five star for, for every win they had, they'd have less five stars than what's on the actual roster. So if the, if the goal is like Pokemon to collect five stars – um, you know, maybe they'll be good, but at the end of the day, you got to coach them up and put them out there. Um, unfortunately, like I just found out about Blunt, and I, I, I didn't have my like, I think Blunt's going to be a great player in the next four to five years. Did you realize he was he's 16 years old right now? He doesn't wow. turn 17 until the seat, like that. I don't understand reclassification, like, I don't, I mean, or like, I get pushing back, I don't understand pushing forward, like. I went to college at 17 and like I turned 18 during camp. Now my body was completely different that next season, but like, I was also a grown man. Like it's like, it's wow. I mean, I think that kid's going to be good. Um, but he wasn't going to do anything for us this year, which is still sucks. Still stinks the way that it kind of went, but kudos to him for making whatever he feels is the best. This is the part that I don't understand. And this is why I was telling. This is why I think our fans are having our fans are struggling. Is because I, we want to argue with people like this. And like, if the goal is like, if, if the goal is to rack up recruits and just do that and not win on the field, man, they way better than us at that. But for the last three years, they've had a better roster. They've had better ingredients, better pizza, better toppings, all that Papa John's logo. And yet they're over in the last three three years. And I'd argue that outside of um Manny's last year, these last two years, the game really hasn't been out of hand at all. Like it like it hasn't Florida State has not at any point felt like they didn't have the um, the opportunity to win that game. So I mean, again, the goal is to push there. I'm not gonna put I'm not gonna punch down. Um, uh, it makes absolutely no sense to do that. But I'm like to me, I was looking through it. Um, we've had in the last five years since 2017, 2017, we finished six overall. Um, and in that six ranking class, I don't think any of those again, no disrespect to those no's. I love them to death. A few of them are playing in the NFL, I believe. Joshua Kando was in that class, Janoris Robinson was in that class, Marvin Wilson was in that class. Um, but none of those guys, and those are some of the five stars. None of those guys left overall huge, huge impressions with what they did on the field. Um, probably the least productive, one of the least productive senior classes that we've had in quite some time. Um, actually, in that senior class, they were part of two of the worst seasons we've had in Florida State, in Florida State history, which again, no, not that they were trying to do that, but it's just coaching matters. Since then, we've had a 22, a 21, two 19 ranked classes, I believe. And then last year was 16th, if I remember, if I remember correctly. Hold on, killer. Come here. Um, and then this year we ranked pretty high, so I'm gonna go with what I want. I mean, I'm gonna go with that. Like I, I like that. I like the climb. I like the trajectory. Win games again. We'll probably finish with consistently top ten classes. I mean, and now we go find out what we're gonna do with a quarterback at the helm. I think Cam Ward is between. It's between us and the NFL. Um, not us in Miami. I'm. I would argue us in the NFL. Um, and then DJ. Um. However, he says now. I got to figure out if he comes to us. I guess I got to figure out how to say it the right way. Um, you know, I think he's. You know, they're waiting on that, and you get that, and now you start looking at. Um, you look in the transfer portal and you clean up for what you got. Um, you're in a situation now where they can go attack strategically and not just try to grab parts. I think one of the problems that we did have going back to 2017 with the six rank class, what Jimbo did toward the during the last his last um, few years at Florida State. And he continued that at Texas A&M. It's just going on a wild chase of just acquiring talent and hoping that it sticks and throwing it out of the wall and hoping something comes with. I think in recruiting now, especially with the NIL, especially with the transfer portal, you have got to be strategic. And I had a friend who's in college coaching um, kind of talk to me with some context. And again, I love speaking with people who are in the field and who are practicing this stuff. He's like, fans have asked for what asked for a salary cap de facto. 
and they got one and they're seeing what happens with the salary cap because you just can't get everybody. And I, I when I when I think about what happened, for example, um, Georgia couldn't get KJ until Dylan um, Rayola left. I'd argue. Now you lost that player. You have money freed up that you already would have allocated to that position. Now you can go make that happen. Ohio State has lost quite a few guys this this um you know in the last the last day or so. Now you can take those monies, reallocate, make sure that you go get this um this prospect you wanted to get. Florida State was sitting there maxed out at basically what they probably felt like they could go and use on this. And what do you do? You lost. Win some, you lose some. Let's go get it on the field. I, I don't know. Just I, I here's my issue. Okay, so Florida fans, y'all want us to be upset because you've got two of the top six players in the country and the rest of your class fell apart. <laughs> Miami, you want us to be jealous of you because you out recruited us supposedly in this year, um, and that Florida State's down bad and it cuts deep. And all, you're talking to the wrong three people as far as Florida State goes, as far as recruiting. I, I'm gonna be honest with you. This is the only part of the season that I dread. Uh, you might have hurt our fan base. Like there's some psychotic people out there that are really upset based off of we didn't land this guy or that guy. Here's the funniest part. None of them upset because of what you landed. We're only upset as far as our fan base of what we did not land. Um, like, I need y'all to actually do something as far as winning goes before we even respect the conversation of speaking to you of matter. Because right now, when I see a Gator logo, I see a dumpster full of just manure. When I look at Miami, I see a dumpster full of candy canes. Because they, I give them the candy canes because at least they do have a recruiting, <laughs> uh, I, I guess, of some sort. The problem is the same two garbage men pick those cans up every Wednesday and they dump those into the garbage truck and take it off. So I, I don't really – I'm not understanding why y'all want us to say, oh, y'all out-recruited us because you got two top six players. Oh, you out-recruited us because you landed a, a top class. Supposedly, y'all, you've had the greatest coaching staff in history of college football, and that got nothing done. Now you've got the greatest class, according to y'all, in the history of college football, and that's not going to do anything for you because you've got the quarterback killer as your head coach. Um, and, and here's the thing. Once you out-recruit us in the high school rankings on all these guys that will not play for you, actually they probably will because y'all have no talent other than that, uh, Outdo us on the portal. Outdo us on the field. Win, win the game. You know, the reason that we recruit, the reason that we go in the portal when we get guys is to win the football games. Y'all are doing such a great job half-ass. Congratulations to you. You are pulling in talent, but you can't use it. You don't know how to utilize it. That's why they enter the portal. That's why they will leave. The U has been back for 23 years, yet they have yet to be back. I, I don't know what we're talking about. Y'all are a tropical storm at best and i don't know if you know as florida state fans but we we like to go out there and just completely let the tropical storm hit us in the face because it doesn't mean anything so beat us and then you can talk to me till then i'm not going to respect that you even have a voice yeah you made a very important point right there and this goes out to the fsu fans and the miami fans can kiss our butts but you know, if you're hung up or you're, these guys are trolling you about this and that or a class, look, it's apples to oranges, all these different programs and what they do with talent and what they do when they get in there. Look what Mike Norvell has done with what he has brought in. Compare yourself to yourself. This class compared to the 22, 21, all these 23, the other classes, it's far and away the best one. So just, just relax. Uh, the conversion rate is at such a higher level in Tallahassee. Um, and maybe we can get a couple of those guys if they're any good. Uh, maybe a Derek Plaus, like uh, James says, in a couple years, realizes he wants to do a year with the good guys. We'll see. But, uh, but yeah, just be ha thankful for the guys we got. And uh, and it's all about the Knowles, man. That's about it. Yeah, I am looking at the adjusted rankings. And, man, some of these classes, Oregon and Miami, are up to 30 players. A lot of commits. I mean, it's like, you know, that it, it, and again, this is why I don't really get into all of this because Miami talked about how good their recruiting class was last year. And 
and then the year before that, and then the year, I mean, they were the eight, like they were the eighth overall ranked class, seventh in the composite. They had a good class last year. You know, that's and what I don't did. get. It's like they did. Like, they, like I said, re recruiting has never been the problem. I mean, even the class that they had when Mario f first got there, it was um the twelfth ranked class, um thirteenth ranked class, excuse me, composite sixteen, and that's not even going to the transfer portal. Like if like when they talk about how many transfers Florida State got, Miami's taking more transfers. Last year, mm -hmm. Miami took, if I remember correctly, like forty some players. They got twenty seven total, I think, to us. No, twenty five for us. Recruiting. You yeah, said yeah, 20, yeah. Twenty seven total I, guys. I thought you were talking about the the portal. Yeah, so over the two year period that Mario's been there, oh, yeah, they yeah, took yeah, twenty seven, yeah. and we took twenty five. My bad. I was talking about just last year alone. Yeah, yeah. Just last season alone, between high school recruits and portal players, over fifty percent of their roster was new last year, and they're on track to probably bring in another forty. I don't know if people <laughs> realize this. You only get 85 scholarship guys. So, like, obviously some of those guys were seniors and they're going to move on and things of that nature, some of the transfer guys they got. But it's like you can't bring in new – like, somebody eventually has to like, have been Miami. So, like, you know, they're doing what they feel like they need to do and what's best um, the Mario way. And, like I said, if it works for you, then great. Um, it's, yet to prove, it's yet to prove itself on the football field. And – all I've seen us do is, is is get significantly better. And again, what we're looking at right now, this class right here is raising the floor. And, you know, again, as I, once I see how the transfer portal works out, I, I like to bet. I like to, um, I, I don't like to bet money. I just like to bet money with people who are overconfident about something and they go too wild. So I always tell people to stand on your business. And most of the time they all back away, um, which was a shame this year because I actually was willing to bet the spread with some people. Some people said money line. They'd have, they might have got some. They'd have got money in the loss if they'd have just bet me on the spread. But they didn't even. They didn't even feel confident that they would do that. But um, you know, like I said, they 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 have to solve their quarterback situation. Um, we'll see what they get um, moving forward. But at the end of the day, I like my team. Um. Congrats. They they had a good recruiting class. I have no trolls for you on that because I don't give a damn about that. I, as I say on my show a lot, do not go around parading little boys and, and daydreaming. And my day does not get ruined by what 17-year-old boys do. Like, that is something to catch a predator stuff. Like, like that's just not what we do. If they choose to come to Florida State, it's great. That's why I do MFTK. <laughs> and, you know, it stands for mentors for the kids, but it also stands for something else. I, if they're not coming to Florida State, then God bless them as long as their interest doesn't interject with ours. But I still believe that when it comes down to it, when Toe meets leather, um, that first weekend in November, if it's played the way it's been played the last few years, um, we'll be hearing the same thing. We, Yeah, you beat us on the football field, but we beat you in recruiting again. <laughs> and um, you know, good for you. If that's what makes you happy, then um dope. I'm I'm with you. Y'all go ahead and y'all y'all win recruiting every year in the offseason battle, and we're gonna try to win these football games um over here and, and try to win the ACC again, which again, that's to me, that's always the goal. Um <laughs> win the ACC and hope to get picked in the college football invitation. In fact, if y'all were better, mm -hmm. we'd be in the college football invitation. That's the problem. That's a real – my real gripe is that y'all are so good, but y'all suck at the same time, and you ruined our opportunity to go to the college football invitation by being so – like our strength of – they always say, look at you play. And I have to go look at Miami and Florida, and they didn't hold up their end of the bargain. That's messed up. If I got to – if that's how I got to win in life, by being so bad that it that it affects somebody else, that's not that's not the right way to do. It. So James, next year what we're going to do is when we beat both of them, but we beat Florida with two of the top six players, and we beat Miami with the, one of the top ranked classes. That means we get in, right? That's what we're going to use next year. That's what I'm going to use. But we beat them, so we're in, right? That's how this works. It's not strength of schedule. It's not how good they played. It's about what's on their roster. They've got all these guys, so we win, right? That's right.
if the most talented teams are supposed to be selected for the playoff, then if you beat the most talented teams, then you should definitely go to the playoff, regardless of what their crappy record is. I would also say this, if you're going to make a direct comparison, I could select any one of these teams, but Texas is right next to Miami currently in the rankings. So Texas has four or five stars. Miami has two. Texas has 16 four stars. I'm sorry, did I say that wrong? Texas has four five stars. Miami, two. Texas has 16 four stars. Miami, 11. Miami's got 17 three stars. And Texas has three. And everybody around them is in the three to five range for three stars. Now, we all know that there can be tremendous three stars. They can be high-end three stars. There are going to be three stars in all these classes that turn out to be really good players. But most of them won't. Uh, and so they've built a class, and it's a really good class. I'm not knocking it down. I'm going to have a Miami show at 7 o'clock Eastern time, everyone. It's an excellent class, but there are 17 three-stars that have bulked up this class to 30 commits. That is a big part of that uh, total points, total number. They call it fraud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's one of these classes like you have seen throughout the years. Dan Mullen, Jimbo Fisher even did it towards the end of his thing where it's like there's a ton of guys in there, a couple five stars that were kind of um, promiscuous in the recruiting style that land down there. And then, yeah, so we'll see. But yeah, I, I lean towards fraud as well. 